The Big Bang created the universe, and after just 14 billion years, you're watching this video. Is this all correct? It is indeed so. Says Stephen Hawking. The Big Bang created an infinite number of parallel universes, and each of them with its own galaxies, black holes, and possibly great civilizations. Today, this theory implies that the physical laws in all worlds must be the same, which means that the universes are similar, but can develop in different ways. As a result, on a general scale, our universe is like an infinite fractal, with a mosaic of different pocket universes, in each of which events develop slightly differently compared to the neighboring one. Just imagine, in one parallel universe, all life on our planet was destroyed by a giant asteroid. Shockwaves, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, tsunamis, fires. In the end, we don't exist, and the empty Earth rotates senselessly around the Sun. In another world, the gravity of Jupiter pushed our planet out of the solar system, and the frozen ball of Earth is flying millions of years through the darkness and cold to nowhere. Or perhaps somewhere, the dinosaurs created a powerful civilization, and now one of them is watching a video all about the causes of mammal extinction. Now, pay attention. The most riddled takeaway. All of these events in parallel worlds are happening simultaneously, right now, while you're watching this video. This isn't the only theory that suggests the existence of an infinite number of worlds. For example, Hugh Everett created his own interpretation of quantum mechanics. The fact is that every recorded event actually creates a new universe every moment of our lives. It might be easier to explain in this way. If you switch channels and stopped watching the video up to this point, then you would actually exist in a parallel universe in relation to yourself now, who would watch the video to the end. Moreover, if we consider this experiment from the point of view of killing the legendary Schrodinger cat, it turns out that the cat is immortal. After all, the cat, as an observer, always sees only one universe, the one in which he by chance survived. Thus, quantum mechanics considers the multiverse like a bunch of giant fireworks, in which every moment more and more flashes continue to multiply, and each of them is a new universe. I'm sure that in most of them, you continue watching this video, because we found out that while you're watching, you're immortal. So. Let's move on. According to some theories, there are universes in which all physical laws and constants differ from the usual and known to us. Our existence depends on a variety of fine-tuning, the value of which seem to be something taken for granted. But if you change the fundamental and familiar things just a little bit, everything would end, says Andre Lind, a member of the National Academy of Sciences. For example, if protons were only two thousandths more massive, they would be unstable and would break up into simpler particles. There would be no atoms in the universe, and no us. Another example is that if gravity were increased, gravity would compress the stars, making them hotter and denser. Instead of existing for billions of years, the stars would burn their fuel for a few million, and go out before life had a chance to develop. So, the fundamental properties of our universe are set up in the best way for the existence of life, and according to the theory of the multiverse, physicists view our familiar world as one of countless worlds in which physical laws and constants have randomly provided the possibility of the emergence of life. But this kind of theory has a small flaw. Most of the other worlds in this multiverse are not only lifeless, but simply empty, dark, and dead. So, 
parallel worlds with fantastic elves and unicorns are unlikely to be able to develop there. But this is inaccurate. After all, if we assume the existence of life within completely different forms unknown to us, which are formed, for example, within the dark matter and are built according to completely different laws, then everything becomes much more interesting. For example, such a super popular direction in physics, string theory, also directly points to the possibility of the existence of a multiverse. To imagine what strings we're talking about, just imagine a logical sequence. Any substance consists of molecules, molecules of atoms, atoms of protons, neutrons, and electrons, and those of quarks. Finally, string theory says that quarks are made up of tiny, twisting strands of energy that resemble strings. Each of these strings is so small that if the atom were enlarged to the size of the solar system, the string would be the size of a tree. Just as the different vibrations of the strings of a musical instrument create music, the different ways in which these strands of energy vibrate give the particles their unique properties and ultimately give rise to all the fundamental forces in the universe – gravitational, electromagnetic, and other types of interactions. As a result of mathematical calculations, Joe Polchinski and Rafael Busso from the University of California found that the basic equations of string theory can have an astronomical number of different solutions, more than 10 to the power of a thousand. To give you a rough idea of the scale of this number, I'll tell you one fact. The number of atoms in the entire visible universe does not exceed the number 10 to the power of 80. Each solution to these string vibration equations represents a unique way to describe the universe, and they will all be correct. These strings are like tiny rubber bands that can twist, stretch, and contract in all sorts of ways. All this, however, doesn't mean that they can't play the symphony of the universe, because these threads, according to string theorists, consist of everything that exists. Leonard Susskind, a professor of theoretical physics at Stanford University, considers it an obvious fact that various solutions to string theory describe a huge variety of real universes, among which our universe is the only one that was born with the right physics for our kind of life. Apart from the question of how and why the universe is tuned exactly to us, scientists are still unable to explain many other things. For example, antimatter. The science of cosmology, which studies the evolution of the universe and its properties, believes that in the universe there should be equal parts of matter and antimatter. But in fact, in the visible part of the universe, it simply isn't so. To solve this paradox, scientists at the Canadian Institute of Theoretical Physics created a theory of the mirror universe. According to this theory, our universe can only be a mirror image of a parallel world. The new model suggests that two symmetrical universes formed during the Big Bang. In one, where we live, time flowed in the usual way, and the other, a mirror began to recede into the past with the same speed. After calculating all of the possible pairs, physicists came to the conclusion that the anti-universe must be extremely similar to our own, but is not an exact copy of it. Lastly, the idea of a multiverse isn't new. Ancient Indian religious texts, for example, are filled with descriptions of many parallel worlds. And the ancient Greeks claimed that there are an infinite number of worlds scattered in the same infinite void. Unfortunately, all this still cannot be confirmed or refuted experimentally. For scientists, parallel worlds exist only as mathematical models. However, I'm personally inspired by the fact that the very concept of the multiverse is not considered pseudoscientific speculation, but the subject of controversy in scientific circles and scientists of various fields. Who knows, maybe all my videos about what if the supercontinent Pangaea came back 
or what if we blow up all nuclear weapons in space were suddenly happening in real time in parallel universes and randomly flying into my head in the form of imagination? Let me know about your most insane versions in the comments. How do you think our universe is really built? And as always, thank you for watching.